up next on Elon Phoenix Weekly. Hear from the captain of the baseball team for the start of their season. Discuss the end of the men's and women's basketball seasons. And get to know the Carolina Thunderbirds. All that and more here on Elon Phoenix Weekly. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Elon Phoenix Weekly. I'm Tellier Lundquist. And I'm Madeline Kern. We have a lot to catch you up on, including breaking down the men's and women's basketball seasons and a fun story of a hockey team you probably didn't know about. But first, baseball season is here at Elon, and with the start of the season, it's only natural to have a few questions about what the players and coaches are thinking about. We got some answers to those questions in this very special look inside Elon's baseball team with the gold standard, put together by our very own Peter Fortunato. Hey, we're, we're second, right? We are hitting second. We're hitting second. V, what up, V? It's game day, V. It's a great day solely because you look at the NCAA, everyone starts on the same day. So it's kind of cool just to, to look around and say, hey, like we're all getting going like today. Swing, Joe. That, that three or four week period that, you know, following Christmas break where we're, we're practicing and everyone's just antsy to get back on the field. Like, cause we don't, at that point we're like, all right, we're done practicing. Like it's time to go. Um, so, so getting an opening day is, you know, it's like we finally made it, like, here we go. I thought Friday was great. Um, you know, the weather turned out to be okay, mid-60s. Um, we had a great crowd uh, coming out. A lot of students came out. Um, you know, we gave Brnovich the ball on Friday night, and, and he does what he does. job and we ended up on a one hitter on opening night which is always a, a plus um, played really clean defense um, so I think after Friday night we were really pleased with how we performed Saturday you know he had to start dealing with some weather a little bit had to push the game time back gave Kirby the baseball and he went out and, and did his thing
And then on Sunday, kind of the same thing again. You know, we um, had to deal with some weather, had to move the game around a little bit because of some impending uh, rain that was supposed to come in, and it actually ended up raining during the game a little bit, which wasn't totally anticipated, but, you know, obviously it's um, something that you can't control. But Mason went out, um, pitched extremely well. Super happy for that kid, man, coming off of a Tommy John surgery. And he threw the ball really well, and then we kind of pieced it together again. Any team can be good on any given day. You know, anyone can have their day where um, they're just better than everyone else. But to bring that level of energy and that level of fight every day, you don't see that very often. It's seldom you ever see a team that can be consistent. Um, and baseball is a game of consistency. I mean, you look at you know the best players in the game; they're not necessarily more talented than other players. They just, every, you know, every time they come to the park, they're going to make an impact in some way. We look forward to learning about the successes of Can Devaney and the rest of the Phoenix throughout the seasons on the Gold Standard. When we come back, we'll discuss the men's basketball year and what's to come with special guest Emmanuel Tobe. Don't miss a thing. Stay right here on Elon Phoenix Weekly. Lifted to center over the head of Giacchino. It'll go all the way to the wall. Sunday is Lynch lifts one, giving it chases ten. And the 2-2 offering swing and strike three. Runner going, Laney will throw down in time. Yes, sir. Damarelli makes the play. Of course, not a CAA champion. Something we've been striving for since my freshman year, and I couldn't be more excited. Welcome back to Elon Phoenix Weekly. I'm Talia Lundquist alongside our Elon basketball analyst, Emmanuel Tobe. Emmanuel, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. With the end of the men's basketball season here at Elon, it was a little underwhelming at times. So we saw them get eighth place in the regular season, but in the first round of the CAA tournament, they were upset by UNC Wilmington. What was your biggest takeaway from the year? Well, from the year, um, I'm looking at we have two great seniors who just kind of ended their Elon careers with us. I'm talking about Steven Santa Anna and Tyler Sebring. Uh, and if you look at our final home game, their senior night, the respect and admiration that the not just the students had, but also the community had for these players. You can really see how much that they have really helped uh, the basketball really community here, as well as just athletics in general. Like Steven Santa Anna has been such a scorer, someone that we have really been able to lean on throughout his career, but especially this year he's became a leader, averaging 16 points a game, six rebounds, and he's 16th all time on the Elon scoring list. And there's not enough that we can say about Tyler Sebring and just all of, just everything that he's brought 
to Elon, how well he's played. He's our number one uh, points leader in terms of Division One, and he's sixth all the time. He's done so much for us, eighth in blocks. Uh, he's third in uh, three-pointers made. He's just done so much. And you, like I said, during senior night, you could really tell the respect and admiration that everyone had for them because of how much they've really given to this school. Well, yeah, and we saw this season Steven Santa Ana surpassing the 1,000-point mark. That Absolutely. was a huge thing for Absolutely. the team. Absolutely. But recently we just heard that Matt Matheny got fired from the head coach position. So with a team that kind of ended the season a little poorly, what's the best approach in this offseason? I think the best approach is to give it time. Uh, and we, we look at Matt Matheny and, you know, it's very unfortunate about what happened, but I think a lot has changed just this year in terms of the basketball program. You know, we have the new Shar Center. Um, we're going to have a lot of young players that are coming up. We have a lot of seniors that are, we have four seniors that are graduating, some who are talking about transferring. So a lot is going to change. And I think with our coach, with whoever our next coach is, we have to give it time. We have really have to wait it out, see who, you know, we can really get. And I think patience is a really big key with finding a coach because this coach is going to have to deal with, like I said, a lot of change, a lot of new players, and a lot of young players as well. And with young players, a young coach, you know, usually is able to fire them up. So that's one thing that I'm looking at in terms of giving, you know, time and patience of finding the right guy who's the right fit for this program. Right, and you mentioned you have four seniors graduating. We had three players just uh, enter the transfer pool for the NCAA, uh, and, and the roster is the majority underclassmen. So with that young coach you mentioned, how do you see this young core finding their, their, their way into next season? Well, I think there's, there's two things. I think for one, I see them really getting a fire. You know, I feel like this is a team that uh, it's a lot of young guys, and they don't really have much to lose coming in with a new coach. You know, it's their second year in this facility, so I don't really think they have a lot to lose. And those people who don't have a lot to lose, you know, are the, the, the most dangerous because they're playing the hardest. They're playing the, they're playing the most aggressive. But I also see that kind of what I was talking about with patience with finding a coach, it's going to take time for these players to develop and to really find their way and find, you know, their comfortness in the Shar Center. You know, it, it's, a, it's a great gym. It's beautiful arena. But sometimes it's a little intimidating when you look out and you see 5,280 seats and, you know, fans are going wild. So it's going to take time. There's going to be some growing pains. But ultimately, I really see, like, this being a program that can grow and develop and to really be serious in the CAA. Yeah, well, one of the few team's returners for next season is Andy Pack. So hear his story and the comeback journey he took to get to Elon. Coming from Greensboro, North Carolina, Andy Pack always dreamed of being a Division I basketball player. Being one of the best players on his high school team, Andy received multiple offers from many different Division I colleges. I got my first interest freshman year of high school. It was when the first couple of colleges started talking to me. Nothing like crazy though, but stuff really picked up like into sophomore year because I had a really good sophomore season. And then junior year is when I started getting my offers and stuff. However, at a state playoff game for his high school, Andy's dream of being a D1 athlete would change, having been severely injured at the game. And my knee just literally exploded. And I tore my ACL, MCL, LCL, and meniscus all at the same time. Having his dream seem so far out of reach was hard enough. However, the recovery process was even more brutal. Three days after surgery, I went outside for the first time and like, I was like out of breath getting down the stairs, like I couldn't breathe. So in that moment, I realized like, I'm, I gotta get back to playing full on basketball again. And that's when you realize like, I don't know if I'll ever be the same. After his recovery, getting back on the court was a struggle. Every, like, every step I was thinking about my knee so I could like barely even play. And then my whole senior season was like that too, but uh, it got better and better every, sing every single day and it's still getting better and better every single day. After his injury, the many schools that had offered Andy places on their team started pulling out and his dream became even further out of reach. However, Elon University and Coach Matheny saw his potential and believed in him despite everything that had happened. It didn't change the fact that he had the qualities of success. And in fact, the qualities that he possesses can help him overcome such a major injury. Andy's tough. Uh, Andy's not only tough, but he's willing to work. And uh, he's willing to listen. So uh, we knew it was a, a pretty significant injury, but we knew he had um, 
the characteristics of somebody that could overcome such an injury. Hearing that from the coaches, Andy knew that Elon was going to be his new home. They don't care if I hurt my knee or not, they still want me. And they were the only school that did anything close to that. And that was immediately when I was like, this is where I need to be. After moving to Elon and overcoming everything that he had, Andy's first Division I game was against the University of North Carolina and would be televised nationally on ESPN. And you think about, uh, as you're watching play in that game, just how far he's come. And uh, we talked about day-to-day -day recovery, and you can think back to the difficulties of the, the initial injury, uh, how emotionally tough that is, and then you fast forward a couple years, and he's playing on the national stage against a, a program like North Carolina. Uh, can't help but put a smile on your face. And Manny, one of the few players that is coming back next year is Andy Pack. How did his presence impact his freshman class? I mean, I think I really like Andy Pack's game. He is a young, emerging player. Um, and not only that, but he has faced a little bit of adversity as well. And I think that's really good when you're trying to mature and grow with the team as well. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Emmanuel, for coming on. Uh, Andy Pack will be back next year for a sophomore season. When we come back, hear what Elon basketball expert Drew Gentry has to say about the end of the women's basketball season, right here on Elon Phoenix Weekly. One-on-one -on -one situation, Ramirez, and gets the stop. Shot, goal made, tally. Sinecori, looks, bounce shot, goal! <laughs> Lifted out toward Renner and elevated off speed. This one will fall off the top of the wall. The Phoenix is on the board. Will it drop? What a play by the shortstop. Anna Olsen, swing and a miss. And that is a nice 5-4-3 double play. Shut drives this one out to left field. Backing up, this one is gone. Tie game. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Elon Phoenix Weekly. We are here again to discuss Elon basketball, but this time we're switching to women's ba basketball team. I'm here with an expert on all there is to know about Elon basketball, Phoenix All Access commentee and one-on-one -on -one sports commentator, Drew Gentry. Drew, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm amazing. <laughs> Very glad to have you on here. So let's get to it. The Elon women's basketball team finishing in the eighth seed. What do you think about their season? Their season wasn't really a disappointment, but considering they were back-to-back -back champions in the CAA the last two years, one conference regular season and tournament, the other just two tournament champions, it means a lot to the program going from a winning program dropping from 14-4 four, and four to 4-14. Four and 14. So this team, Coach Charlotte Smith before the season said they were going to have a lot of growing pains, but the growing pains weren't expected to be this drastic, I think. They're just really looking for some leadership, and they really need to find somebody to take those reins, especially after losing Jada Graves early in the first game of the season, just in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. It really had hurt their team drastically as chemistry because you lost the defensive player of the year, mm -hmm. and it just hurt them as a whole Right, and speaking of Jada Graves, her and Lexi Mercer are going into their senior year. What would you like to see about them going into next season? Well, Jada Graves is actually being granted a red shirt, so she's going to be uh, a red shirt junior, which means she has two years of eligibility left. Um, so I'm really expecting her to come back full strength. She's been walking around, running around, and working out with the team for a very long time now. The injury happened in November, so I. ACL usually takes about ten month, eight months, ten months to fully recover itself. Um, so I really expect her to take the reins back over, show the vocal leadership, lead on the defensive end. But Lexi, on the other hand, she had a, uh, not as good of a season as I would have liked her to have. In conference, she only averaged 6.6 .6 points per game, and uh, she only shot 29.3% from three. She's known as a three-point specialist, and I just would like to see her take that senior leadership because this, that's what this team really was lacking. They had no seniors on the roster this year, nobody with experience besides Lexi Mercer and Jada, but again, you lose Jada and you have a bunch of freshmen and sophomores. They were the sixth youngest team in the nation last season and they only got younger. 
Right. Um, so forward Emily Maupin had a great season. She scored 315 points, which was the highest on the team. So next season, what would you like to see her do? What, could she improve? Or, uh, I think she had a great season. Coming from a role-playing position all the way into starting every single game this season, was the led the team in minutes, played over 490 minutes in conference play, averaged 11.6 points. She had a great season. Uh, she just needs to be more aggressive. She needs to work on her true post game. She has the potential to be a dominant player. She showed that scoring 26 points as a season high this year, and she showed the mentality to be able to lead a team. She just needs to work on her aggressiveness and being able to truly lead on both sides of the floor. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. So as we said earlier, the team finished in the eighth seed in the conference. So next season, what do you think the team as a whole could do better to advance in the rankings? Well, working on their turnovers and rebounding is a big thing. They average 18 turnovers per game and a negative 1.3 margin. That means the team, they only cause 16.7 turnovers per game. And turning the ball over 18 times in 10 minute quarters for four quarters, that's not good at all. Especially when you're this young, you can work on yourself and taking care of the ball. Rebounding, they went 0 for 12, 0 and 12 in games where they are out rebounded and they allowed 37 rebounds per game to their 35. So just having that, you gotta work on crashing the boards. And part of that comes with true post players, which they are recruiting. And they have two post players coming in with 15 player roster. They'll have depth and the ability with the freshmen from this past season and the sophomores that are gonna be rising juniors having more knowledge of how to play, how to lead. You'll see people taking the reins and taking responsibility, actually leading the team to success. And I believe you'll see a lot of improvement from four and 14 to getting back on track to winning, uh, winning record in the conference play. Yeah, well thank you Drew. No problem. Very much. So this is all the time we have for this interview, but when we come back, we will step outside the Elon bubble and talk about some local hockey. Stay tuned. The CAA athlete has a lot of pride in what they do in the classroom and also what they do on the basketball court. They're the true student athletes. You know, you learn uh, not only what's book smart, but you also learn, you know, how to deal with people, how to bring out the best in them. Every single day, you're challenged to do something great. You never know when the ball is going to stop bouncing. Your education has to be your number one priority because your education will take you a whole lot further than a jump shot will. Hello CA fans and welcome to CAA.TV. From in-studio updates with news and highlights to go along with our marquee shows this week in CA football and CA Hoops Weekly. To live HD streaming of events from every campus and every sport, we'll go on campus too, giving you an in-depth look at the lives of the coaches and students behind the championships. Check in with us every day on YouTube and of course by visiting us here at CAA.TV. Ever heard of the Carolina Thunderbirds? Well, they're a hockey team in the Federation Hockey League, or FHL, that play in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Going into their game on February 10th against the Watertown Wolves, the Thunderbirds had won 24 straight games, the second longest streak in any hockey league. So, let's go outside the bubble of Elon and learn more about this local hockey team. Oh, I think, uh, I think you have a lot of fun here, you know? Like, uh, you see goals, you see hits, you see fights. Uh, you see the fans cheering. You know, it's something special. Uh, I have, we have a lot of people coming, you know, first time to a hockey game, and they're like, uh, where can I get a season ticket? Because, you know, like a ticket costs $10. A season ticket, I think, is $260, $280 for, uh, for 32 games. Like, you enjoy something here. You have a lot of fun, and you meet people here. I think it's a great thing. I mean, we've got a really tight-knit group. I mean, we spend all day, every day together, and we all, I mean, we have a really good locker room. Like, guys really like each other and get along well, and that's huge. I mean, you see a lot of teams fall apart because of drama in the locker room, and we just don't have any of that. These guys play their hearts out, you know. Not saying the NHL guys don't play their hearts out, but you know we we don't do this for the money. That's for sure. So, you know, you really see you really see everything that everybody's got out there. So. Oh, 
a lot of people ask about the streak. It's on social media and everywhere, but we're more like uh, we want to win every game. And uh, so we won 24 in a row, and here we are right now. We want a championship. I mean, the winning streak is great, but you know, the only thing that really matters in our book is is playoffs. And so we just we just we had an early exit last year, and we we want to close this year and, and walk away with the cup. Uh, come cheer us on, and uh, let's win a cup. The Thunderbirds are handily in first place in the FHL and look forward to a long playoff push. If you missed anything or want to watch it again, catch us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Elon Phoenix Weekly. And go to elonphoenix.com to check out upcoming events for Elon Athletics. Don't forget to tune in next time for another exciting edition of Elon Phoenix Weekly. On behalf of the crew, I'm Madeline Kern. And I'm Tellier Lundquist. See you next time and go Phoenix.